Attention, please. <laughs> we congratulate all the stayers who are here at 5.30. Thank you so much. So Gustavo is going to start uh, with some, some comments. I will speak and the minister will be joining us. Gustavo, no, thank over you. to you. What's such an honor, Helen, that, yeah. Thank you. Uh, no, we must admit that uh, those have been too busy, but certainly uh, inspiring days. Uh, thank you to all sincere ideas that you shared with us, uh, the interventions that you made along the, the, the different panels, with more than 300 participants representing over 100 organizations from 40 countries, the discussions were certainly very lively. We would like to thank uh, Canada, Germany, Switzerland, and the EU for the generous sponsorship and making this event possible. The consensus around a new vision for the Syria crisis response, which started, I think that Helen, you remember, you remember a small meeting of Friends of Resilience on the sidelines of the Kuwait 3 conference, uh, then went into a, a very wide and inclusive country consultations in the six countries, has now culminated over those two days in the resilience agenda. The Resilience Agenda is a strategic roadmap that sets basic principles and suggests 10 elements for future actions that will guide our collective action forward. Still more important, the Resilience Agenda reflects a new set of commitments. I thank you all and leave you in the very able hands of Helen Clark. We wait for the Minister Fakuri, who will help us capture the rich debate in the forum and with their summary, bring this forum to conclusion. But this is not an end. It is the beginning of a new chapter in our collective effort to address one of the most complex crises in our time. We hope that the outcomes of the Resilience Development Forum will strategically inform the coming London Conference on the Syria crisis. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Gustavo, and uh, Gustavo has actually been a, a driving force within UNDP for us to get him behind this uh, agenda, and as he said, the discussions uh, around it have been going for several years. I credited my dear colleague Antonio Guterres with uh, approaching us to get much more involved, uh, going back about three years now, and so much work has been done. Uh, we saw the 3RP, the Regional uh, Refugee and Resilience Plan that was issued at the end of last year and then promoted at the Kuwait conference is very important, along with the Syria uh, response plan. But uh, really seeing the, the very, very wide range of stakeholders who've come here today to, to talk about this kind of approach has been extremely encouraging. So I want to thank Gustavo uh, for his personal uh, investment in it. Uh, and, of course, the, the whole family of people who have gathered. So the forum set out to affirm the critical importance of resilience-based approaches uh, to support uh, two Syrians impacted by the, the crisis and to explore practical ways to make that happen. And I think that there's been a lot of practical uh, ideas, actions, discussed, displayed, exhibited uh, over the course of the, the two days. Uh, the marketplace uh, booths were quite remarkable in showcasing a lot of innovation in the response across the relief to development spectrum. We saw the technical innovations which improve refugee res registration services and well-being. Uh, we saw uh, the way in which uh, trauma for children uh, is being addressed uh, through play. Uh, we saw uh, information about affordable renewable energy technologies for refugees and host communities, we've seen uh, more information about how jobs and livelihoods can be advanced even in the most uh, dire of circumstances as represented in, in Syria today. Very importantly, we heard from the host countries. We heard from the ministers uh, from the countries most affected uh, by the spillover effects from the crisis. And they highlighted both their unique challenges, because each has unique challenges in the response, but also the shared challenges 
of hosting very significant numbers of uh, refugees. And I think that set the stage then for the discussion in all the panels that followed. And I thank everyone uh, who moderated, chaired, took part in and, uh, and participated in those, those panels. Antonio Guterres highlighted in our opening session that in today's world, addressing protracted crises in Syria and beyond absolutely requires the actors to work together, the humanitarian and the development actors to work together. And I think we've advanced shared thinking about that over these two days. Our host, Minister Fakuri, highlighted that the Syrian crisis is a global issue. It demands global solutions. It demands global solidarity. And when I met His, his Majesty King Abdullah II uh, earlier today, he shared his view that we should think much more holistically about the humanitarian development and security nexus. So I think what has come through uh, two days of uh, really intense discussion is a much better understanding of the key issues which underlie uh, this concept of the Dead Sea Resilience Agenda. Namely, the resilience approach needs to be an integral part of the support provided to Syrians inside Syria and in the neighbouring countries. And it is also critical to enhancing the resilience of the communities and countries which are hosting Syrians. The international efforts should leverage and strengthen the national capacities and systems to cope with, adapt to and recover from this protracted crisis. It has been a, a clear theme of discussion that the international community must look at new multi-year financial commitments to support neighbouring countries too to address the challenges which they face. And given always inevitably limited resourcing, we have to look at new pooled funding arrangements, development swaps and other innovations. Widening partnerships that are fully inclusive of international and regional financial institutions and the private sector is imperative. I think it's important to underline that the private sector is not being called on to help refugees in that narrow sense, but rather to enable refugees and to enable uh, host communities. Public financing and aid can and should leverage private investment. And as discussions today have emphasised, market expansion is needed to integrate both local and displaced job seekers. Further to this, it is imperative that we look beyond labels like middle income country and explore ways of expanding the quantity and the type of international public finance available to countries affected by the Syrian crisis. All partners, I believe, see the need to provide refugees with increased access to livelihoods, but of course more livelihoods are needed for host communities as well. And national and international partners can look at new job creation initiatives, strategies, policies and public-private partnerships around that. So the forum has been important in helping to identify and articulate and come to a better shared understanding of what are the critical elements of this resilience agenda going forward. And I think it will be important to keep the momentum now uh, to capitalise on upcoming and planned events to advocate for the resilience agenda and put it into action. And that's the key thing. We, we know the ideas, we know the approaches, we have a good idea about what is working, we now need more action. I think the critical elements that are outlined in that Dead Sea Resilience Agenda uh, definitely should be considered by host governments as they continue to revamp their national response plans. And those critical elements in the Dead Sea Resilience Agenda can also underpin a new partnership between host governments and international partners. As we've mentioned many times in the course of today, the financing of a resilience approach needs to match its ambition. And I welcome the further discussions which took place today during the Aid Architecture Panel on ways of making that happen. The critical elements outlined in the Dead Sea Agenda should be key factors in shaping the organisation and results of the International Donor Conference planned on the Syria crisis which I understand will be hosted by the United Kingdom 
in partnership with Norway and Germany. Meanwhile, we invite the governments in the sub-region to continue to call on our UN resident coordinators and country teams to support and assist their efforts in implementing a stronger resilience agenda, to safeguard and advance the development of host countries as they continue uh, their role in support of very significant numbers of refugees. Let me again recognise the efforts of the many partners who participated in the broad-based cons consultations in countries in the neighbourhood, facilitated by the UN country teams in the lead-up to the forum. And finally, I thank again uh, our host government here, the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan government, for hosting us and all the key donors which made the forum possible. We look forward to continued partnerships, dialogue, and I underline action, to make all the promising concepts, ideas, initiatives we've heard about here truly a reality. And it is clear that many millions of lives and livelihoods across the sub-region depend on that. Thank you very much and a safe trip home. I'm now going to call on our host, uh, Minister uh, Fakuri, to uh, sum up uh, from, uh, from Jordan. Minister. Your Excellency, Ms. Helen Clark, UNDP Administrator and Chair of the United Nations Development Group. Um, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great pleasure as we are concluding this forum to allow me to take the opportunity to thank you for your active participation and contributions. You have been truly resilient over the past two days. <laughs> the Resilience Agenda is a truly innovative and forward-looking outcome document, and its guiding principles are indeed the starting point for a new era of cooperation and global partnership in support of resilience in our region. It provides a clear, consistent, and collective vision that articulates short, mid, and long-term goals for how we tackle the most pressing challenges in Syria and neighboring countries. I'm very grateful to the many colleague ministers and deputy ministers who have been with us from neighboring countries, the bilateral partners, civil society, private sector stakeholders who have joined us to show their strong commitment to the resilience in the Middle East. And I would like to thank you all for partaking in this important event. I firmly believe that the success of this forum and your presence here over the past two days represents the critical mass required to unlock the potential of resilience across our region. This has been a driving theme of our deliberations here today, that the resilience agenda holds the promise on converting a protracted humanitarian crisis into an opportunity to build for the future. With its endorsement, we will be taking a critical step towards securing a credible future for people and communities affected by one of the most destructive crises we have witnessed in recent history. The agenda li lays out five core principles. First, resilience requires us that we move away from the traditional siloed approach of discrete humanitarian and development frameworks designed and implemented independently of each other, both in terms of programming and financing. Second, we must prioritize the dignity of individuals. People have an innate inclination towards self-reliance and by fostering this agency as an operational imperative rather than an abstract concept, a response becomes more effective and ultimately sustainable. Third, we must invest in local capacities and make it a priority to maintain and strengthen local institutions rather than creating parallel systems or structures. Fourth, the partnership platform for resilience must be made more inclusive 
in order to fully maximize its potential. We need to think about how to effectively create opportunities to engage the new actors in more constructive and creative ways. And finally, fifth, we must foster social cohesion so as to strengthen the social fabric of communities. These commitments can bring about real change, but the real test will lie in their implementation. In seeking to realize this ambitious agenda and to make it real in people's lives, there are a number of areas where we need to focus our efforts and our attention. First, the time for decisive action to preserve local capacities is now. Sustainable and durable solutions tomorrow will only be possible if we create the necessary environment for recovery today. Delaying action on this issue will only serve to make investments in resilience more costly in the future, financially, economically, and socially. Second, resilient strengthening requires resilient financing. Donor fatigue will ultimately result in host government and host community fatigue. Financing needs for resilience are high, and to date, the actual support for resilience interventions has not reflected stakeholders' stated commitments. This year in Jordan, only a small fraction of what has been allocated for the Jordan Response Plan went towards resilience. Adequate support is required if we are to make resilience a reality. Thirdly, we need to work towards enhancing financial predictability, pooling fragmented funding, and exploring more creative avenues for the delivery of financial assistance with the least overheads and where all the partners are working at the national and local levels as one team. Fourth, we must mobilize all available resources and capacities towards resilience. We need to explore how to make the partnership platform more inclusive in order to best leverage its transformative potential. We need to think about how to effectively create opportunities to engage with the private sector, enhance partnerships, and maximize the capacity of the economic system in host countries. The private sector has a key role to play in supporting local livelihoods and economic growth, and appropriate policies need to be in place to maximize their potential. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are truly at a critical juncture, and the stakes could not be higher. This is a bold agenda, and it is our responsibility to translate these commitments into action. Resilience is neither an isolated sector nor a discrete objective. It is rather the outcome of better integration of humanitarian and development approaches. The duration and the extent of this crisis are unprecedented and require a response commensurate with the scale of the challenge. I am confident that the outcomes of this forum will contribute towards a new vision for responding to the continuing challenge of the Syria crisis. Before ending my remarks, I would like to again thank all participants and wish you all safety back home, and we look forward to seeing the actionable agenda from UNDP based on the past two days' deliberations so we can push it at the international level. Thank you, and it was a pleasure hosting you in Jordan. Thank you very much, uh, Minister, for really being with us all along the way, this journey of organizing the forum. We really appreciate that and appreciate your summing up. I always get a new phrase from the Minister when I hear him, <laughs> so I will now go away and say, donor fatigue will lead to host country fatigue, and we really f would fear the consequences of, of that. So once again, big thanks to everybody who has uh, come. Uh, attending uh, ministers and senior officials, my uh, colleagues, uh, the heads of 
UN agencies and international organizations. I referred to uh, the two Tonys and uh, Bill Swing as troopers this morning. I still see trooper Bill Swing in the front <laughs> row. So good on you, uh, Bill. And I, I know uh, Tony was here chairing uh, the social stability uh, a panel uh, just before we, we came to this closure. All the deputy directors who are here, all the resident coordinators and teams who, who have come. Uh, international organisations, NGOs, civil society, I see many, many of you. And of course to organise a forum like this, uh, it, it's taken a lot of effort. Uh, from uh, the UNDP Regional Bureau for Arab States, uh, supported by uh, other parts of, of UNDP also, but particular burden on this bureau. And I want to thank uh, the people in headquarters, the people in the Amman uh, Regional Hub, and all our country officers. Uh, and of course, uh, the region also sits on the boundary between UNDP regions. So when I acknowledge the, the country officers of, of Syria, and Iraq, and of Lebanon, and of Jordan. I also must add Turkey in our regional bureau for uh, Europe and the CIS as well, and the resident coordinator is, is, is here. Uh, so uh, everybody who's come, we, we really thank you for your interest, and uh, let's take the momentum from this into mobilizing the kind of effective support that really will make a difference pending the political settlement and outcome we all hope for from the Syria crisis. Thank you very much. Shukran.